Hello, this video is for MYP students who are working in design and uh, they're preparing their summative document for Criterion B and they're waiting to get top marks. They want to get a score of 8 out of 8. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what to do for strand 1, Criterion B strand 1, uh, so you can ensure that you get top marks. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the assessment criteria. Uh, it says here, it develops detailed design specifications. So one of the key words here is detailed. So you're not going to get top marks unless it's detailed. Uh, you also need to explain the success criteria. So how are you actually going to measure uh, each design specification? You need to explain this. And also, there should be some connection to research. So those are the words that I've highlighted and that I'll focus a little bit more on as I talk you through uh, some of the points here about how you can get top marks for Criterion B Strand 1. So first of all, I would recommend that you start with a list of design specifications. So just uh, try to aim for like between five and 10. Just list out the design specifications uh, for the product that you're actually gonna make. Now, if you're stuck for inspiration, not sure where to start, you could revisit Criterion A Strand 3. Now, when we, when we did Criterion A Strand 3, that is where you uh, looked at some existing products and analyzed them. And it was during this time that I suggested you find some analysis tools. So if you're making a video, how do you analyze the, uh, a video to see if it's a success or not? If you're doing some coding, how do you analyze your coding? If you're making a website, making a cake, uh, making a letterbox, whatever it is. So we analyzed, we used some analytical tools when we did strand three. So you can revisit there and that might help you. If you're still stuck for ideas, then you can, uh, Think of Access FM. Now again, we talked about this in Strand 3. So I'm just going to scroll back to Strand 3, Criterion A Strand 3, to refresh your memories. So here is Access FM. So if you're stuck for ideas for design specifications, start with this. Uh, and you don't have to use them all. You can just pick out a, a, a couple of those, but it should, uh, should get the thought process started. Uh, also, remember we talked about, oh, don't worry about the SWOT analysis, but things like if you're making a chair, how do you analyze that a chair is a success? You can start with thinking about the backrest, the armrest. So you sh revisit strand three to start getting some ideas about what, what uh, making that list of design specifications. Okay, let's get back on track. Uh, when you're doing, once you've made your list of design specifications between five and 10, the next step is to start explaining in more detail what you mean. So if you're talking about you're building a chair and one of the design specification, it needs to be quite stable and strong. Now, what do you mean by that? Um, so you can start doing some research and explaining. Now you can use some images. So thinking of the difference between say three legs on a chair compared to four legs on a chair, compared to a wide base, compared to a small base. So this is helping you now build a picture of exactly what you mean by having a strong foundation of a chair. Now this also need you start then connecting this to research. So to recap, you start with the design specification, then explain it in greater detail, and link it to some research. This will help you get top marks. Now you can also start talking about why did you actually choose this? Now quite often, if you're making something for a target audience, this is what the target audience wants or the client wants. So just back to the chair example, if you're making a chair for a target audience, a person, and they say, I want a chair that is quite tall. In fact, I want a stool. So the reason for you making uh, a design specification about specific heights of the chair, it's to meet the demands of the target audience. So give me some reasons why you've actually chosen these design specifications. Uh, just to compare the opposite, if you've got a list of design specifications that you've just plucked from the sky and there's no research, they're very weak. But if they're research-based and there's a reason for you choosing them, they're very strong design specifications and they're purposeful design specifications. Okay, the next thing, uh, we now need to measure that. So you know, we've now, we've to recap, you've identified a design specification, you've explained it and connected it to research. Now we need to somehow work out how are you going to measure it? So when you finish your product, how do you measure that it's actually a success or failure? So you need to start thinking now, do we actually need to measure it? Do I need someone to sit on the chair or do I need someone to watch the film? Um, so 
who is actually going to test it? Is it the target audience? Is it the client? Uh, or is it your teacher? Or is it your mum? Or is it your friend? Or is it a group of people as well? So you need to work out who is going to test that particular design specification. And when they test it, how do they grade it? So is it a pass fail? Or is it a rating from one to five? Five being excellent, one being not very good at all, zero meaning not done. So you need to talk about who's going to test it, when they're going to test it, why they're the person that's going to test it, and how are they actually going to measure it. Is it a pass, fail, A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever it might be. So give them a measuring scale. So that's the next thing. Okay, now, so you've got your design specifications. Now, the idea is that if you can make yourself a nice list or a table, because your design specification, you're going to use them again and again and again. Because uh, for criterion B, you can re reuse the design specifications, not all the details, but mainly the specifications in strand two, in strand three, and strand four of criterion B. You're also gonna, you can also use them in criterion C, strand four, and you're definitely gonna use them when you do criterion D, strand one, two, and three. So keep this in mind, you're going to make a list of design specifications that's going to be reproduced, reproduced, reproduced in your summative assessment document. But it's also, when you're building your product, you, you need to keep making reference back to these design specifications because it shapes what you're creating. So if you're creating some kind of a coding, uh, some, some product some, some, or an app some, for, a, for a phone, whatever it might be, and you're making some choices along the way, the design specifications will guide these choices. So very important to get these right. Now, you don't need to get them perfect the first time because as you start working through criterion B, C and D, you might need to adjust them and change them along the way as you go, as the more you get into the pro project and the more you learn, and that's perfectly fine. So at this stage, when you're making your little design specifications, you're making them to the best of your knowledge, but you're gonna update them as you go so that the product you're making uh, is in sync with not only the design brief, but the design specifications as well. Okay, uh, what other points? Okay, I've just got a, one last little tip here, which is basically, easiest thing to do is probably create a table. So here's a table here that I've created. In the left column uh, are, the, are, the, are the design specifications. Next column, you start to explain, you give a description, an explanation, and you link it to research. You also tell me why you've actually chosen it. Uh, the next column I've actually added, that's for your citation. So if you've done some research from a book, you put the book citation in there, the author and the book title. If you've interviewed somebody like your client or a, or a target audience or you've done a survey, that's primary research, you tell me that's where you got the information. So therefore you're clearly linking it to research, which is one of the assessment criteria. And then the last column is uh, the testing details, how, when, where, why, and with what kind of measurement scale are you going to test each design specification. So that's a neat little snapshot of how to uh, create, get top marks for strand one criterion B. Actually, before I sign off, I just wanna share with you about the assessment criteria and the mark scheme and how this is gonna be graded. So you're clear on what you're aiming for uh, as a student, so when you're preparing your documents. So first of all, when it comes to the design specifications, if you list some basic design specifications, the maximum score you're gonna get is two. But uh, if you develop these, you're gonna get a score of six, that's the maximum score. But if you develop detailed design specification, that's when you're gonna get your score of eight. Now the second part of this, uh, not only the design specification, but you need some success criteria. So if your design specification somewhat relates to your success criteria, maximum score you're gonna get is four. However, if your design specifications, uh, and you've got your design specifications uh, that you've developed and that you actually outline the success criteria, you can get a maximum score of six. But if you've got your detailed design specifications plus you're explaining the success criteria, this is the testing method, then you're on track for top marks. But to get a guarantee and get the score of eight, you need to link it to some research. So just to put that in some context, when you're doing strand one, I'd be getting you to start with just a list of some design specifications. So this is like the lower end of the mark band, mark scheme. Uh, you then start to expand this to a better, more detailed list and you develop this detailed list. So start with a basic list and then make it more detailed. 
Uh, now with the uh, success criteria also, you start with something simple and then you expand and make it more and more and more detailed, but you connect it to research. So once again, good luck.